Hello guys, welcome to my 2017 NHL Metropolitan Division predictions. Today I'm going to be predicting where I think each team in the NHL Metropolitan Division will finish. Now let's get right into it. In 8th, I think will be the New Jersey Devils. I don't really see it from the Devils this year. They did have a, a good draft pick. Picking, or not good, the best draft pick, picking up Nico Hiche in the draft, which I don't like. I would have rather had Nolan Patrick, but oh well. Um, yeah, they do have players like, they did pick up Ryan Boyle in free agency. They traded from Marcus Johansson. That's a good one. They picked up Drew Stafford recently. Like, their their offense is young is fairly young and decent. They got Taylor Hall, former first overall pick. They got Adam Henrique. They have Kyle Palmieri, Paul Zaka coming up, Travis Zajac. Like this team could be good in a few years. But the defense I think is where this team struggles. Like who their best defenseman is like Dalton Prout, Ben Lovejoy. They have a very poor defense. But in goal, they do have Corey Schneider, who needs a bounce back year. But Corey Schneider is an all-star goaltender. I think he will bounce back, but I don't think it will be enough. I think the defense will let this team down, and they will finish bottom of the Metro. Now in seventh, we have the train wreck that is the New York Islanders. The Islanders... They've fallen so far in the past few years. I think the Islanders will struggle as of right now because of one man and one man only. The best player on the team, John Tavares. John Tavares is not signed to the New York Islanders. He is a tremendous talent and he needs to get signed quick if the Islanders hope to do better. I think all this talk about him will... Be will shift the focus from the team winning games to John Tavares too much, and it will hurt them. And I think they'll finish in seventh place because of it. They're not bad enough to finish in last, but all the controversy will make them finish below Carolina and Philly. And speaking of Philly, in sixth place I have the Philadelphia Flyers. Now this one was close, putting between the Flyers and the Hurricanes. I really don't see them being that far from each other. Uh, maybe three points max, I'd say, between the Hurricanes and the Flyers. I think they're both pretty so uh, solid teams. I don't see either of them making the playoffs, but they're both right on the cusp. The Metro's just stacked this year, so I could see it being hard for them. They did have the second overall pick, and they did pick up Nolan Patrick. I like that pick. I think that was a steal for them. They and he they're adding him to an offense that features, you know, guys like Claude Giroux, Wayne Simmons, Jakub Voracek, you know, the, uh, Vladdy Filpio. This is a decent. It's a decent offense, and the defense guys like Shane Goshespear. He needs to bounce back. Ivan Provorov. He's young. He can be a big part of this defense. I just think, I don't think the defense right now is good enough. I think the offense is a little bit lackluster. And then the goaltending, there's question marks there too. They lost Steve Mason, who was kind of inconsistent for them. They brought in Brian Elliott, who did okay in Calgary. And they have Michael Neuverth, a man, former Sabre, man I really like. Who's, I always thought should is good enough to be a number one. But apparently they don't think so. Now, to Carolina in fifth place, a lot of people have this Hurricanes team being a playoff team. I don't see it. Like, especially if guys like Sebastian Ajo struggle in their second year. They do have guys, you know, the typical, you know, Jeff Skinner, Jordan Stahl, Tavo Teravine, and they brought in Mr. Playoffs, Justin Williams. I could see them being better than the Flyers. Their offense, I think, are fairly even, but this is where they got the Flyers beat. They have a decent defense. You know, they got Justin Falk, Noah Hannafin, TVR, Trevor Van Riemsdyk, Jacob Slavin. 
They got a they got a good defense. Goaltending, I think, is where the questions start to come. Can Scott Darling be a number one goalie? I don't think so. I think Scott Darling is a good backup. Then they have Cam Ward. Right now, I see they have two backups in Scott Darling and Cam Ward. They they're going to be playing musical goaltenders, and I don't think you can win uh, and make the playoffs with while playing musical goaltenders. In fourth, I have the Columbus Blue Jackets making the playoffs. This team, they had a very good year. I saw, I see them falling a little bit from third last year. Everybody predicted them to not do very well, and they ended up finishing, like I said, in third with 108 points. I thought that was ridiculous. The team just stepped up. This team is good. But I really only have them in fourth for one reason, and it's I don't see the Capitals falling that far. Uh, they did pick up Artemi Panarin, a legitimate scorer. But the only problem with Artemi Panarin is, can he do it without Patrick Kane? Without the support the Blackhawks have? Because they are very different teams. And, I mean, the Blue Jackets have some talent. You know, Nick Foligno, Brandon Dubinsky... Cam Atkinson, they have some nice players on the on the back end on defense. You know, they got Zach Wierenski, who's not bad. David Savard's okay. Ryan Murray, Seth Jones, Jack Johnson. They got a decent defense. Then in goal, Sergey Bobrovsky. They got a he's a nice goalie. He had an outstanding season. So I think. He could help the Blue Jackets. If Bobrovsky isn't very good, though, they could definitely falter. And that could maybe lead to Carolina making a playoff push. But I think this team is far and away better than the Hurricanes. But you never know. In third place, I have the Washington Capitals. The Capitals. The biggest chokers in the NHL right now. The Washington Capitals... They have Alex Ovechkin. They have Braden Holtby, one of the best goalies in the game. They ha- they're they going to be good enough to be a divisional playoff team. I just don't think they'll be able to challenge for a cup anymore. There's, their core is strong enough. They're on the. I think they are on the downswing. But there's, I think they're on the downswing. Sorry about the noise. But their core is strong enough. And in second place... I have the New York Rangers. The Rangers had a bounce back year after I thought they were cooked. They had 102 points, finishing fourth in the Metro. I th- I thought the Rangers were done. I thought they were cooked. I thought they were they were starting to be on the downturn, but they turned it around. You know, I mean, their offense is all right. They got Jimmy Vesey, Mika Zibanejad, you know, Rick Nash. JT Miller, Matt Zuccarello, like, they have a decent offense. Kevin Hayes, they they added David DeHarnay. But on the back end, you know, I think is where they're going to be very nice. They have Ryan McDonough, the big man, Ryan McDonough. They added Kevin Shattenkirk. They got Mark Stahl. They got Anthony D'Angelo, Brady Shea. Those guys are pretty nice for the future. Um, they did lose Dan Girardi, which I think was more pros than cons. And in goal, they added Andre Pavlek, who's a pretty solid goalie, as a backup to Henrik Lundqvist. And Henrik Lundqvist, I don't think he's done yet. I think King, King Henrik has still got a few more years left in him. And in first place, due for a good offseason, I have the defending two-time Stanley Cup champion, Pittsburgh Penguins. I think the Pens are due to have a stellar offseason. They finished second last year with 111 points. I think they're due for a stellar offseason. Maybe even a President's Trophy. Who knows? I don't think they'll win a cup again, but I think they are. They're going to have their success in the regular season. Now, I would like to thank you guys so very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.